If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's where he says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. It is Women's Week. Shout out to all yeah, the women everywhere. that's right. Shout that, out to us, ladies. Uh, uh, <laughs> first of all, none of us would be here. <laughs> right. Um... If it wasn't for the wombs of our mothers. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my mom, even out, outside the womb. You know what you did, girl. Thank you very much, Mom Deuce. <laughs> BMW in this bitch. Rest in peace to my mom. Rest in peace to uh, Wanda Padilla. I loved you. I'll see you again real soon, inshallah. Not real soon. Uh, okay, guys, here we go. Song number two. Song number two is... Oh, song number two is Dawn of the Infinite Fire. This is, again, from the same band we're going with, uh, Azagram, or Azagram. Mm -hmm. Dawn of the Infinite Fire. This is another live video for all of us. It's going to start at 29.30. So that was the same show, right? That was the same show? Ooh, this is for, uh, wait a minute, that's it, a it, weird date. Yeah, like I'm hoping it's... This is, is January 14th, 2023, is that the one we are doing now. And this last one was, yeah, you're right. How'd you know that? Um, brilliant. Yeah, because I'm brilliant. This is my husband. Because I'm brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Song number two. Okay, what did you say? Time Smart to man for you. Okay. Oh, 2930, I believe is what I said. All yeah, right. 2930. And it's going to 35. 15. All right, 2930. Yeah. I'm going to let this one play out because that's at 29.21. Where's the mute button? Mute. Did you say 29.30, you said? Yeah, 29.30. Six, seven. Talk to the people. I don't oh, like wow, this I'm dead me. air. <laughs> All, right, All right, guys. Here we go. So glad I got to talk to you guys. Yeah, you, you took too long. Asa Grom live in Rosenheim, Germany. No. The name of the song is Dawn, Dawn of the Infinite, Infinite Fire. Fire. Fire! Let's do this shit. This is the dawn of infinite fire.
Okay, that was Asgrom. How do I pronounce it? Asgrom, Dawn of Infinite Fire. Uh, Dawn of Infinite Fire. That was from the same show that we yep. just that we just covered. They, same they, live uh, show. So if there's no question as to whether or not these girls can stand up live, yeah, sonically. that's what I was just gonna say. I'm like, well, we know that. Yeah, like, and that's big too because black metal. I think I don't know if CISO was still here. I'd actually ask him, but like black metal, um, I think can be risky to play live if you're not doing it good. It can sound really, especially like this kind of black metal wasn't like isn't like the the overproduced. I'm not gonna mention any bands, but there's some bands that are like very recent wave black metal. It's very very highly produced and all that. This is kind of more almost like in the second generation. My point is, like, it can really sound muddy and sloppy live, mm -hmm. that kind of play. Yep. And um, mm -hmm. they still did a really, really, really good job. I agree. Really good job. Shout out to the big homie BC in this bitch. Shout out to BC. Every time BC shows up and says hello, hello children, children. Yeah. it always reminds me of, oh, wait, the Hello, Ethan. Hello, Ethan. <laughs> Shout out to Johnny Haas. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Johnny Haas in this bitch. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, it, it seems, I see the blood moon rising in the sky again, yearning for the serpent's knowledge. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Because, you know, we talk about Genesis and in Genesis, the serpent, just going to do that for now, comes up to Eve and basically, you know, breathes to her the secrets of secret knowledge and tells her, go and, you know, basically go away from the things that God has told you to do and go over here and do this thing instead. And you're going to get this secret knowledge that's. It's going to change things for you. And you know what? It did change things for her. Drastically, even. Changed things for everybody. It changed it for all of us. Yeah. Good okay. job, Mom. <laughs> uh, okay, this have part. It. What we got to have it for uh, Women's Week. We got to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this part was pretty. Samuel, come unto me. With thy dark winds, wings, I will ascend. I. Samuel. Okay. Yeah. When one of Not the... Samuel. Okay, all right. Then Samuel that uh, yeah, I think the lyrics here are wrong. Is this genius? Or was this metal no, work? No, this is Yeah. It, it it's okay. Samuel. Metal women. Samuel is a prophet. Samuel is a is a divine being. Okay. You, you know what I thought it was? He was one of the guys Remember... that was hanging out with Shimyaza and them. It sounded like it. when you Mount pronounced Ramon. the name, it sounded like that more. Yeah. Well who was the Remember there Shemiah. was um I can't think of the, per the people's names. That's why I'm asking you. He goes and he asks the witch of Endor to bring up who? Saul to bring up Samuel. Right. So that's what I thought was going on. I was yeah. like, I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure that the one that he called up was Samuel. And then I thought it was kind of like, because. Samuel, come to in... me with thy dark winds, I will ascend. Yeah. Yeah. Samuel never had any dark wings. No, but in Christian, in certain Christian circles, when he went to call, when he went to the witch of Endor and had him call up Samuel, there are some people that say, yes, he literally called up Samuel and he had a conversation with Samuel. But then there are other people that say it was not Samuel that came to him, but rather a demon that was presenting that? Samuel. That's what we were taught along with the bells on the feet that they would pull. You know what I'm saying? Like it was probably one of those things. But when I heard it now that I'm seeing your face, you know, oh. no, I also had heard your side of it too, where it was actually literally him. Um, but I wasn't sure if she was playing on that part of it where, it did Arturo send like... us a commercial about March Madness yet? Yeah, he did. Oh, okay. you, you forgot. I told you. Instead <laughs> of the real commercial, we're going to be playing another commercial during the commercial. Pay very close attention. Um. Uh, okay, keep going. Yeah. Um. So you thought do, he was talking about Samuel. Do me a Samuel. favor and send it to me again. You so thought I he was talking right about there. Samuel. Well, yeah. Instead of Samuel. Right, right. And I thought if... I thought she might have been playing off of that, where if it was actually not Samuel, but it was actually a dark demon that came to him that was talking to him, and then it was basically like, you know, yeah, with thy dark wings I will ascend, like. Yeah, I, I think you know, but especially I, I, I especially the previous song where she was calling out all these demons or whatever, it yeah. seems to go within her writing style. That I've never heard when you say I've never heard that about Samuel that it was a demon that was saying that to to, to Saul. Yeah, so a demon, demon gave a legit up. prophecy. And a demon was called up, yeah. A demon gave a legit prophecy? Because Samuel prophesied that he was going to die that day. Yeah. Yeah. So your Bible college, they just made shit up. I, I don't even think that was my Bible college. I'm pretty sure that was before Bible college. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, but I the think thing they're is, talking about you know Samuel. Why they had to I don't do think that? they're talking about Samuel. They had Samuel to do is that. a demon. They had to do that because they were trying to, you know, like, because you could not... 
There was no, you couldn't speak to the dead. You couldn't, everything was a demon. You remember that whole demon under every rock thing? Like, I yeah. was very closely connected yeah, with that of people. It's a lot of, yeah. It's yeah, a it, lot of fear-based. It's, 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 it's a kind of Christianity I loathed when I was coming back into Christianity because it was just so superstitious. And they would take it the was pretty much every, It was pretty much toys. everything that atheists, every crazy caricature of Christianity that atheists have, yeah. like, gets worked out in that little subculture. And that's why I hate it. Because, like, mm -hmm. the rest of us aren't like that. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, you know, they do have a point when they, you know, that type of thing. But, yeah, any, anyway, it's Semiel. Um, I, I'm i pretty sure. Come on I mean, to there's me some useful ones, stuff that comes from that crew. Because they there are, there are tips and tricks that have been actually helpful in the area of supernatural stuff. That I, I've utilized many times and I've seen actually work. And they're the ones that introduced me to those concepts. So... It's not all, but I mean, a, some, a lot of it, a lot of it was really crazy. I remember like they said Super Mario had, was demons like in the screen. Yeah, I just, I, I just. They would take I, the voice boxes. I, I remember the, the Furby? Fact, the Furby the they said was demon possessed. I think the fact that God is gracious and worked around those people doesn't mean that they had good points about anything. I, I just. But that means it's a good point if God worked around it and God brought a good point out. No, no. God brought the entire world salvation through the crucifixion of an innocent man. We don't go, hey, let's go crucify innocent people because God brought something good out of it. So just because God brought something good out of some practice you learned from those folks doesn't mean necessarily that it was good. That it was a good practice? Yeah, it might just mean God felt sorry for the person and wanted to deliver them. Uh, and you guys just happen to be the only people around. But I've seen way right, more harm uh, brought to people. And in the name of Christ in that subculture than I've ever seen anything good. It's, that's, you know, I've seen a lot of, you know, crazy yeah. shit. Your left, your daughter's left handed. You know, she's, that's a sign of demon. Like that, that's the brand of Christianity that set people on fire. Yeah. You know, I knew and somebody like, that was having seizures and they, uh, they didn't put her on medication. They, they would just kept. Yeah, and, and, and I believe in praying over people for healing. Certainly I was healed as a child. I was going to be hooked up to dialysis the rest of my life from the, from the time that I was like, I don't know, freaking four years old or something like that. I was going to be hooked up to dialysis uh, for two hours every single day. I think is what they said. Um, but God healed me of that and God saved right. your life and healed you too. So I firmly believe in that. Um, but like, I don't think that they, I do think that God gave us the wisdom of medicines and different stuff that we can utilize to, to heal ourselves. And um, even in the Bible, there's there's a verse where um, one person says to the other person, like, drink a little wine for your yeah, stomach. Start, like, Paul, he didn't say Paul just pray and Timothy's, expect it to be healed. Stop drinking only water, but mix wine with it because uh -huh. they were using wine as a disinfectant because the water in, you know, Second Temple Judaism was like the water in Tijuana. Mm. And so he said, take some med. So you used to mix alcohol with your water so that you could keep the water down. But there were some people that would take vows, religious vows, and they wouldn't touch any wine. And so the older guy writes to the younger guy and says, that's very nice of you, but you need to take wine for your weak stomach, man. Like, let's just be practical about this. You got to find your way to devote yourself to God some other way because this mm -hmm. is not working for you. you yeah. a See, Christianity yeah. is a very practical religion. So like I can't stand that subculture because I have a I have a policy that I'm never gonna disown my people. So if a, if if an atheist comes to me and says you guys believe in superstitious bullshit blah blah blah, I'm never gonna say those people aren't Christian. Mm -hmm. We don't believe yeah, that. Yeah. Like you can't do that. Yeah. So same thing with the Crusades. Like I'm always gonna own my people. I just can't stand that because because it, it, it's like sometimes superstition is just innocent, but a lot of times it's just a control mechanism. I mean, at a meta level, superstition functions as a way to give us the illusion of control in the first place. Oh, step on a crack, you break your mother's back. You have no control as to whether or not your mom's going to fall down the stairs. You have no control as to whether or not she's going to get in a brutal car accident. But you do have control over whether or not you step on a crack. Mm -hmm. So superstitions, mm -hmm. a lot of times at a meta level, function to give us yep. the, the illusion of some sort of control. Um and in that sense, it could be psychically um, healing. But on the other hand, uh, as I said in the previous situation, the cost to me is just too much. Oh, 100%. The cost is just way, way, way too much. Delaney, uh, right here. Boop. Delaney, um, actually, it's 
it's the opposite that everything there's a verse here i'm going to read to you james 1 17 every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights who does not change his shifting shadows um that's james 1 17. so that tells us that everything good comes from god and we we also know looking at the crucifixion which vin just brought up earlier like it was the most horrific event that happened in history to see the like the god of the universe is being crucified and killed on a cross by at the hands of human beings and that brought about the ultimate good because that that granted us access to our father so we're, we're kind of at this place where like even like good and bad both comes from God because God works the he's working the bad to bring about the ultimate good. Um, but certainly everything good, you know, comes from God. And, and in the life of a Christian, we have that verse that says that God is working all things for our good. So even the, the most painful points of our life, just like the cross was the most painful thing brought about that ultimate good, like those really painful parts in our lives, like. There's two ways. This is one thing that I've, I've really learned over the last probably five years is that you have two, maybe more, but I'm going to simplify. You have two, two ways that you can take when you're faced with an event. And when you're faced with pain and you're faced with horrible things that come or whatever, you can get bitter about it and you can say, why is this happening to me? I shouldn't be this, blah, 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 blah. Or we can accept those things as from God's hand and say everything has been sifted through God's hand that is coming into my life. And even though I'm in pain and even though my life seems like whatever sort of way, like God is in this every second he's walking with me through this. And those two perspectives alter the course of how you're going to experience something. It was like that might seem like a little bit of an outlandish story, but there was this person that had um, they had been molested when they were a child. And they were, was really like something that was bringing them great pain throughout their life. Every time they thought about it, it was just really, really horrible. They sat down with a therapist and when they were walking it through with the therapist, it turned out that it was, it was like when they were like four and it was with like a four year old. And so then it was more like, you know, this is more like kids curiosity. This is not like a grown person, like take com completely taking advantage of the child and that perspective change changed how she looked at it and it actually made like a really big positive change in her life she was kind of able to heal from that so i think that that principle is true in all of our life that if we can look at a situation and we know that situation as much as it hurts or as horrible as it is that god is working something good in our lives through it and that in the end he's going to be glorified through it and we're going to be exalted in it then there's so then there's something different from it but if we see all the bad things as like we're being crushed beneath it and there is chaos and nobody, nobody's in control of this and you're just like a punching bag for the universe, then it's a different feel and you're going to experience those two. The, the exact same event can be experienced two different ways. So there's a lot of principles in the Bible that if we apply them, really help us and really help us mentally to not get dr like just dragged down under the weight of what happens around us and to us. Yeah, I think the other thing, too, is to recognize that we're not dualists. In other words, we do not. And I kind of said this and you probably picked up on this. I don't I don't know because I don't know what time you came in. But I remember I said Cat Williams yeah. said something to Joe Rogan and they're like it works at the regular level, but it doesn't work at the second level. And she just hit on it. So we're not dualists. In other words, we do not believe that the oh, devil. The one you said Perkinos. <laughs> yeah, we do not believe that the devil is equivalent to God. No, no. So if I say, if I say all good comes from God and all bad does not come from the devil, it works because we're not saying that these, are, these two beings are equals on the opposite ends of the spectrum. One is the infinite self-sustaining creator. The other is a, I mean, to be honest with you, a, janitor, a, Leviathan, a janitor, um, who's angry at the, at the, at the CEO. I mean, <laughs> that's honestly what it comes down to. And so. What that means, Elaine, is that the devil can have an intention, but he he may not have the power to or the permission to carry it out, carry it about. That's why I said not every bad thing is the devil's fault because the devil does not have the power to execute his will in the world omnipotently because he's a created being. Mm -hmm. God, on the other hand, does, mm -hmm. and so that's why the scripture says every good and perfect gift mm -hmm. comes from above from the Father of Lights. What's interesting about that passage? That you brought up because the passage that you brought up is talking about god as the father of lights plural mm. and in this song oh boy <laughs> what in this song tell me the name of the song is fire right like dawn, infinite, of, dawn infinite of infinite fire infinite yep. fire okay yeah and, and, and look what it says he who burns within with lightless flames yo 
he who brings me with black salvation and thousands of names. So right there, you can see, uh, there it is again. This is the dawn of the infinite fire, a shining without lights. And I think that that's very important because if you have a shining without light, that means that it's an illusion. It's not really light. Um, it's actually darkness. And it seems that in this song that this young lady has been harmed probably by religious people. I'm not going to go like to what I completely suspect, but this young lady seems to have a very deep desire for power and identity. Mm. In both the songs that we looked at, she wants power and identity. And in this song at the end, it's heartbreaking. She says, I'm a daughter of Lucifer. That's really specific. Mm -hmm. She didn't say I'm a child. You know, there's a sense in which the term man is very general. The very child, the, the term child is, is general, but female pronouns are really, really specific, especially when you're talking about literature. You talk about mankind. You never talk about womankind. Mm. My point is she's being very specific here. She wants to be associated with someone still. She's not saying I'm going to go out on my own and do my thing and fuck everybody. Mm -hmm. She's saying I have a father. I want to be part of a family. I want an identity mm -hmm. and I want power so that the people who hurt me don't have the power to hurt me again. And this is one of the major misses in Christianity when it comes to um, quote unquote devil music. It's like we're so pedestrian and superstitious. You know, uh, Tina, I think Tina was alluding to some superstition. And interesting as well, but like we're so, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's like the minute you hear a 666 or you see this person in, in coarse paint and tattoos and she's saying she's a child of Lucifer, it's like, yeah, let's just not analyze it all. How we got there. Let's just react to it. <laughs> yeah. To me, I'm seeing a very, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a very hurt individual who mm -hmm. refuses to quit mm -hmm. um, and is grasping as much as she possibly can to still somehow have an identity as a child yeah. of the devil, a daughter of Lucifer. But she wants to be able to live in such a way as to have an identity and, and not have those dangers. She wants to be protected from it. It's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's very, very tough. The ending of the song says, a shining without light. I am the bearer of infinite wisdom, a daughter of Lucifer. And that made me think immediately about Proverbs 9. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Um, that, that, I think about that verse a lot. Um, and I just thought that that kind of like, the other thing too that, that I, that I thought was interesting was the whole, um, you were, you were touching on it before talking about a shining without light. And you talked about, you know, probably maybe she's been hurt in her life and stuff. And a lot of times people use that euphemism. Is that the correct word? Like, mm -hmm. um, when you've been hurt that they stole light from you they stole from you mm -hmm. and so when she says a shining without light uh, i don't know it just it that's a hard that's a hard listen to especially i guess from a, i guess from a parent perspective but yeah um shout out to this band shout out to the writer i i love what i love about it is that she's really raw and honest mm -hmm. and she's not trying to hide and be like you know this is where she's at she said she who fills my heart with putrid hate mm. That's Lilith, I'm assuming. Probably, yeah. Right? And, and you know, so... Um, the other thing, too, he who brings me black salvation with thousands of names. And remember when um, Moses was going to go to Egypt, he was like, well, who am I supposed to say sent me? Right. Because they worshipped so many gods at that time that when he was going to go before Pharaoh, who represented Ra, the sun god, he had to say, look, he was telling Pharaoh, let all these slaves go, like all of them, let them go. That was going to completely change Egypt as it was. But he was like, I got to, I mean, I can't just go over there and just say, he's going to ask who, who's saying this, who's backing this, who, who's the authority behind this that's going to enforce this if I don't do what you're saying. And so when, when Moses asks um, bur the burning bush, which he's talking to Yahweh. He asks him, what, what, who do I say sent me? He said, I am that I am. And so he just says, I am. And that's so like simple, like I am. Um, but then when you think about when he, when it said thousands of names, mm -hmm. it reminded me of Legion. Remember when that, the, the person that was like filled with demons, they were like yeah, she mentioned tearing Legion. themselves to pieces and yeah. throwing themselves in the flame. And when they were asked, what is your name? They said, our name is Legion for we are many. Like they were 
captivated by so many demons internally. Um, that has got to be terrifying. Like a friggin' black hole. Like living in a black hole. Like if you're that person and you're like, like they said that they would hear him uh, screaming I don't know from. What that. happens with his consciousness when those things take over? I don't. What do you get the song? Mm, yeah. Um, I'm gonna give this one a nine, a nine point two. Uh, I'll give it a solid, solid nine. Solid nine. I'd like to interview this. this I would this too. Band. I said it the last time. You guys, if you're open for an interview, send us an email, binandsori at gmail.com. I'd be very interested. I'm not trying to convert anybody. I just, I just want to hear like. Yeah. I'd just love to hear the story and ask some questions story. and stuff. Yeah, for sure. We got more metal coming for we you do. losers. We do. You losers. Losers. On the back of the uh, thingamajig. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's already says 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh, message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Bye, merch.